reminder of the wartime relics and it's a reminder of when Kingman was invaded by China. I'm going to take you to this lookout point and it really puts things in perspective just how this battle unfolded because you can see China it's very close just a few kilometers away and then you can see the coastline and you even have these little uh, bunkers bomb shelters. You can look down in here and it echoes so probably fit quite a few soldiers. But yeah, let's check this out. If we go up here, you can see really well the coastline where the battle ensued and just how close we are to China when they cross this ocean. When China invaded Taiwan, the bulk of the battle took place on this coastline and east of me. But a lot of the battle took place right here where I'm standing. And China did not know what Taiwan had in store for them. So they came with about 9,000 troops. And Taiwan had about 45,000 waiting. But you can see if you look across the ocean here, China is not that far away. So Ximin is right behind me. You see those buildings? That's China. So they cross the ocean and they land on this beach. And what happens from there makes a difference between Taiwan being communist today or democracy. This tank right here, you've seen it around looked at anything about Kinman. It is a symbol of Kinman. There's a crazy history here. No one else better at tells us about the history than yeah. Kayla. If you watched any YouTube about Kinman, you recognize Kayla. Kayla, what's the short version of the history of Kinman? All right, so let me give you the most short history of Jimin and actually get a little in depth as well. So the short history of Jimin, I like to view it different layers because when I first came to Jimin I had so much to learn and even to this day I'm still learning but I think the most important thing is to understand that the history in Jimin goes back much further than people expect it's much more than just war there are villages in Jimin that are over 700 years 700 old. years old yes so there have been three Chinese dynasties here the Tang dynasty the Ming dynasty the Qing dynasty and then once we get into the late 1800s and the early 1900s, we start to learn about the Kimmanese that were traveling overseas to work in countries like Singapore. And they were sending lots of money back here to build these Western style buildings that you will see all around Jimmy. And it's beautiful architecture. Yeah, absolutely incredible architecture. And they would like deck them out with like tiles, like the Fujian homes even have these beautiful tiles. And it was a way of showing off how much wealth their family had. And then after we go past that history, then we start to get into the famous war history that everybody knows Jimin for, such as the tank we see And it's so us. crazy. We have a tank on the beach. It's real. There was so much war relics around the island. Absolutely. So, of course, it's amazing to come and get to know Jimin and learn the history about the war. But if you come here, please be sure to check out all of the history beyond that because there is so much more in Jimin than just meets the eye. Should we go check out town? Walk around? Yeah, let's We're go. We're going to walk around town a bit. Explore a little more, have a little bite to eat. What 
you think like there are certain things in Taiwan that the U.S. could learn from Taiwan or parts of this culture we could bring back to the U.S. that would be pretty cool. Culturally, I think I would miss the kindness of people. Mm -hmm. And so if there's something I do to somebody in Taiwan, if I like bump them or like that, I would perceive as rude. I feel like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I would really like to see in the U.S. like, oh, if I accidentally bump somebody that they're not going to be like, oh. like they're going to get mad at me and take it as an aggressive thing. You know, if you're like, if somebody bumps you, you understand like it wasn't intentional. They're not trying to like start a fight. You know, the other thing I, I really respect about Taiwan is how they respect their elderly. Mm -hmm. You know, they really take care of the elderly here. And I think in the U.S. we forgot about our elderly. We just ship them off to a care home, whereas here, you yes. see so often where they're spending time, they're, they're living together maybe, or they're out in the streets wheeling their elderly. Yeah, and I, I think that comes down to the individualistic culture in the U.S. too, because people here are living with their family for many generations, and they're very close. Where in the U.S., it's like, okay, bye, you need to go be an adult on your own. And then there's, that, there's a detachment that grows mm -hmm. between family because you're supposed to take care of yourself. So, you know, we kind of just assume everybody else can take care of themselves, right? Many a times we've been at my favorite sushi spot in Hualien, you know, with Jean Ru. He serves up this nice, like, oysters. And this is where it comes from, Kimmen. And these are the women responsible of putting everything on our plate over there in Hualien at the sushi restaurant. to you, your girlfriend, in Shimen. <laughs> Eason's girlfriend lives in Shimen, right? Mm. What is her name? Shaman. Shaman. Mm. What is her name? Grace. Grace? Mm. Grace, are you watching? Come pay. Eason misses you. How her? How her? Gao Liang. Gao Liang. Gaolian <laughs> So, so last time we were seated like this, we were on the airplane, Eason, uh, we were flying in from Taipei. Transmitting electronic devices must be turned off or in flight mode. So I'm going to show you where I'm staying and I guess the city of Kinmen is going through like uh, some funding to rehab these old homes and this one's been done really nice. I love the doors. I'm kind of infatuated with 
the doors that can they're so cool. So you gotta gotta step over the ledge there. So here we are in the entryway. I love all the wood. It has a little bit of a scent, natural scent from it, but yeah, the doors are so cool. They flow. They have these kind of wooden locks. Super cool. Feel pretty safe. So the house runs pretty deep. It's kind of a large lot, really. You have this courtyard. And what they've done is I think they have different guest rooms along here. Uh, quite peaceful. And the way they've done the rooms are quite comfortable. So here's why I stay. See here, pretty comfortable bed. So these different houses have been redone in different ways. And I think this one's probably unique. If you're in Kim, and I think this is the only way to stay to get the full experience, these old uh, homes that are like 300 years old and you get that real like Asian I think the architectural charm you can really feel it in these old neighborhoods the how things might have been back then you know and it's fun to walk around and let's go check out the village and see if we can run into any people this morning but these little back alleys are so cool architecture get a real sense of what it was like <coughs> centuries ago <coughs> I wonder like back in the day if these little alleys and walkways had a lot more liveliness to them you know if people were out and about <coughs> And although it's quiet in the streets, it's quite lively right here. We're making some, uh, I'm not sure what they are, kind of this doughy fried, but probably quite traditional food. Looks like we have one more little shop here. It's kind of cool. Old bottles of Galion liquor. I think this might have been an old restaurant. And our morning walk continues, exploring this little village. <clears throat> Get a sense of what it was like 250, 300 years ago. We did the same thing.
local Cameron spot. It looks so delicious and uh, we saw the chef throwing in extra spice. I asked for a little extra kick. I feel like this cuisine has a little more like um, mainland China influence because we saw the chef is using a lot of spice and if you request it. And it's been nice. They accommodate me for like, I don't eat beef, chicken, or pork. So they like made the rice that typically has pork or no pork in a really special extra spicy fish dish. Let's do a little evening exploring of the village. I know up here I saw a couple little shops earlier, like a, I don't know, looked like a small food place and I think there was a barber shop. So we'll take a walk around. I think this is really cool, this wall. It's lit up by, it looks like a solar panel and I can't read what it says, but I think it's something about the moon, the stars. And for somebody watching, I might have to rely on you to make the translation, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like a mural that illuminates with a solar panel. I think there's certain months where Kinman might be a little more busy, but overall, in general, it's amazing how quiet it is. And even here, it's like 8 o'clock at night. And in this little village, I don't really see anyone out. Go down these little alleyways. Sometimes you hear a few voices, but you don't see anyone. So we find the shop open. We have, there's a barber shop, Joni. Joni's videoing us, probably for her Instagram story. Hair, hair, hair. Haircut. Cool. So it's the only thing open in the whole village is a barber shop. Oh. Okay, I think that's all we have for tonight. Oh, it was awesome. See you soon. See you later. Mm. Bye. 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 Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This brings it to an end. Again, I'm Philip James, and I'm coming to you from Kinmen Island, Taiwan, just off the coast of mainland China. And I'm about ready to get some rest in this cool 250-year-old historic Kinman home. Until next time.